you need to get that dispatcher to get some LEA here immediately. In 1947, the responsibility for nuclear weapons transportation was transferred to the Albuquerque Operations Office of the Atomic Energy Commission, predecessor to the Department of Energy. This office administers the total United States nuclear weapons program, including the design, production, and delivery of nuclear weapons and components. This office also deploys radiological emergency response assets, such as Radiological Assistance Program Team, and the Accident Response Group to any radiological emergency worldwide. In the early 1970s, the Albuquerque Operations Office was directed to expand its transportation system to provide protection to all shipments involving special nuclear material. The National Nuclear Security Administration, or NNSA, is a semi-autonomous entity within the Department of Energy. The Office of Secure Transportation, or OST, is the largest office within the NNSA and was created to manage this effort. The Atomic Energy Commission developed the first Safe Secure Trailer, or SST, for the transport of these materials to meet the protection of special nuclear material requirements. The SST is constructed to survive very severe highway accidents, including impact and long duration fire. Recently, a new generation of trailers, the SGT, or Safeguards Transporter, has been added to the fleet. The SST and SGT are designed and built to deter, surprise, and delay even the most aggressive adversary. OST convoys are comprised of unmarked escort and transport vehicles. The only easily recognized feature is the U.S. government license plate. Escort vehicles always accompany transport vehicles. Transports are conventional three-axle truck tractors with two-axle semi-trailers, while the escorts are primarily Ford vans. The officers who operate these vehicles are NNSA federal agents. They are highly trained, well-armed, and are authorized to use deadly force to protect their cargo. Each federal agent has completed over 1,000 hours of agent candidate training and receives continuous training throughout his career in the form of Operational Readiness Training, or ORT. They receive detailed instruction on the techniques of operating all necessary equipment, as well as conducting paramilitary operations. They also receive expert instruction in tactics, including the use of a variety of firearms. Instruction on the complex operating procedures and safe handling of the SST and SGTs are given enormous emphasis because the Office of Secure Transportation logs over four and a half million miles each year. Federal agents are required to observe all traffic-related laws. If a transport vehicle in a convoy is pulled over by law enforcement in a routine traffic stop, an escort vehicle, usually the convoy commander vehicle, will pull up behind the law enforcement vehicle to interface with the officer. Federal agents are required to stay in the transport vehicle. Federal agents do not wear uniforms, but do carry federal agents' credentials. The agent or convoy commander from the escort vehicle will display his badge as he exits the vehicle. Federal agents are instructed to identify themselves and cooperate fully with local law enforcement agencies. The agent from the escort vehicle will try to resolve the situation with the law enforcement officer. If the officer insists on speaking with the driver, the convoy commander will escort the officer to the transport vehicle. Access to the cargo is not possible because the trailer doors can only be opened in an approved security area. The trip-related paperwork is classified due to the sensitive nature of the cargo. Convoy vehicles are equipped with a sophisticated communication system that allows for inter-convoy communication 
and direct contact with the Transportation and Emergency Control Center, or the TECC of OST. The TECC is located in Albuquerque, New Mexico. The TECC is the first line in the support of convoys. If the security of a convoy is threatened in any way, such as an accident, or is prevented from moving by a group of protesters, or is attacked, the situation is assessed and the TECC is notified and provided with details. At this time, the TECC requests law enforcement assistance. Through an active liaison program, the OST TECC maintains a 24-hour emergency contact number provided by each state's governor's office. During a convoy emergency, an open communications line is established and maintained between TECC and the designated state agency. This way, a continuous update of information from the scene can be relayed to the responding units. The NNSA may need your assistance in a variety of situations. Law enforcement officers arriving at the scene could be asked to link up with federal agents in charge or his representative to organize a joint command post, establish roadblocks, and provide agents with information about the area you're more familiar with. Direct deployment and activities of other responding law enforcement or emergency response personnel upon arrival. Secure perimeters, making sure only authorized personnel get in or out of the affected area. Contact local emergency medical or fire crews, as well as any state emergency agencies like HAZMAT, radiological control, and ordnance disposal units. Control crowds or traffic around a convoy. Provide temporary detention or transportation of federal prisoners until the FBI, U.S. Marshal's Office, or a replacement federal agent can accept custody. Help secure an area until the hostile situation stabilizes and the agents are prepared to resume travel. Provide coordinated armed support for the pursuit and recovery of stolen cargo. Specially trained state forces such as SWAT may also be deployed. Finally, if your organization is aware of threat information relative to transportation in your area, that information may be of interest to OST. For example, known threats against the interstate highway infrastructure, bridges, overpasses, etc. The most common situations involving law enforcement officers besides a traffic stop would be a vehicle involved in an accident, a law enforcement roadblock, or a protest or demonstration on the convoy. The responding officers, after the initial interface with federal agents, will be asked to meet with the convoy commander to discuss the situation and the best way to resolve it. If there's an attack on a convoy, a request will be made to the TECC for LEA assistance. The TECC has a detailed mapping and tracking system of OST convoys. The TECC coordinating through your dispatcher will request you establish roadblocks at given locations. This is to keep the public out of the area. When the opportunity allows, the TECC will request through your dispatcher that you link up with a federal agent. When you are responding because of an attack on a convoy, you should exercise extreme caution when approaching the site because the initial link-up may be very tense, especially if shots have been fired. Along with a request for assistance will be a sign-countersign authentication to assist other agencies in the identification process. Sign-countersign is a system of exchanging words to identify allies. Federal agents in escort vehicles have the sign-countersign and are designated to link up with the responding officers. The responding officer receives the sign countersign from their dispatcher as provided by the TECC. Remember, agents don't wear uniforms and they could be concealed along the roadside or off in the high grass and brush. The federal agent will say one word, Romeo! then the officer will reply back with the remaining word. India! As long as the two words are the same as the ones given, both agencies can be assured of proper identification. If not, you should consider the possibility that the contact may be an imposter. In the event a wrong sign countersign is passed, both parties should obtain cover and attempt to exchange additional identification. This can be accomplished through the TECC and the responding officer's dispatcher or by both parties exchanging identifications. The agent and the officer will discuss the situation, establish a joint command post, and develop a coordinated response. 
the federal agents will give a handheld radio to the responding officers. This will complete a communications loop between the agencies and establish a unified approach to the emergency. The exchange is an important aspect of OST's procedure. If you get a radio, be sure you know how to use it and that it works properly and is tuned to the correct frequency. Federal agents and responding law enforcement officers must work together during an OST emergency to maintain national security and public safety. Federal agents have firepower and communications capabilities. State and local law enforcement have the knowledge of the terrain and the surrounding area and the ability to provide effective containment. If the federal agents lose custody of the material being shipped, the FBI is in charge of the investigation, but OST agents will initiate pursuit and recovery operations. However, timing may be such that the FBI is not immediately available. Thus, OST assumes the lead for recovery. Such things as observation, pursuit, and intelligence gathering by local law enforcement may be essential for continuity of operations during this time. Working together without delay in protecting the shipment could prevent an adversary force from escaping with any cargo. If a true emergency should arise, the role of your agency will be significant. Your assistance under these circumstances or in any situation involving OST convoys would be invaluable. Your understanding of our transportation system and your quick response can help ensure a successful resolution of an emergency situation that could affect the security and safety of our nation. As the federal agents and law enforcement regain control of the situation, a National Security Area, or NSA, is declared around the area. An NSA temporarily places land under effective control of NNSA for the purpose of safeguarding classified, sensitive, and or restrictive data to protect NNSA equipment or materials. The incident command system is implemented, state law enforcement officers are informed of the situation and quickly incorporated into a joint command with OST. An incident command post and entry control point are established near the NSA. In the event of an accident or terrorist act where a trailer is damaged, the federal agent will make initial recommended protective actions on the hazards of the materials to the first arriving law enforcement or state official, including fire departments and hazmat teams. The recommended protective action is also provided to your state via fax from the TECC within 15 minutes of classification. This action is to warn and protect the public in the event of a hazardous release into the atmosphere. Law enforcement will immediately make calls for emergency medical and fire assistance as warranted, as well as to other state emergency and or local agencies, such as hazardous materials and radiological response. Federal agents communicating through TECC will request specialized assistance from NNSA. Through many years of training and experience, OST has perfected a system of emergency response, including initial notification, monitoring and assessment of the situation, and working with other agencies to resolve any emergency. Various components of the NNSA are prepared to respond immediately to any type of radiological accident or incident anywhere in the world. The safety, security, and timeliness of nuclear weapons shipments throughout the United States is of continuing concern. There is no question that these shipments could be considered as potential targets of diversion or sabotage. The organizations responding to a threat on a convoy must be serious and determined if we're to maintain strong control and custody of nuclear materials. With your help, NNSA has the best people and technology on hand to carry out its critical mission of protecting people and the environment.